Good evening from Points North. A special Bexpo edition of Points West on the day that the boy David is off. Off to Newcastle. The high-flying manager who once played left-back for Sheffield Knives in the Back United and was also rejected as a possible fifth member of the Beatles is today taking over the BBC's broadcasting centre in Newcastle. Boy David was quick to respond to his transfer today, but would only say, way I, lad. The career of this mature, distinguished figure, well known for his high-quality staff appointments, his sensitivity, charm, debonair good looks. Uh, Jim, you don't have to keep writing this sort of lies. Just leave it. Anyways, it all began appropriately in the North. It's said he was the first regional presenter to win a contract while still in short pants. Well, in a tribute to his magnificent journalism, Jim McDougall has reconstructed important elements of his career. The boy David's steel-like persona was crafted in Yorkshire, where his broadcasting abilities against the odds were fully tested. The Cleveland Way, and we'll be taking another look at the pathway as it leads along the coast to Filey later this week. Through the worst floods of the north, with people rendered homeless, even deaths from drowning, the boy David always managed to get to the heart of the story. This is where we say good evening from the new look, look north, from our new Leeds studios. Hi lads, this, as you know, is a just... One of the outstanding aspects of the boy David's broadcasting career has been his legs. He played left back because he always was left back. In the realms of the box pop, the boy David has no equal. What, what are you doing here? Well, uh, I'm acid in it, acid in it, putting acid on it. I'm afraid. Acid? Yes. On her behind? Yes. One of Mr. Seymour's child prodigies, plucked from office T-boy at Southampton, first to do the same job again here at Bristol, and then later to be head of tea and biscuits at Spur, is Mark Byford, and he joins us now from the Leeds studio. Uh, Mark Byford, you must feel you have quite a lot that you owe Mr. Seymour for. I owe him everything. Everything in my career. I learnt about tea, Darjeeling. He became my own Darjeeling when I was in Southampton. Uh, when I became head of Boggs designate, I learnt all about toilet roll in Bristol. I also learned what a kind individual David Seymour was to work for as a manager. All was firm, but all was so reliable to me as editor. Uh, his great achievements for me in Bristol were the following. To give up smoking despite all the odds. To invent supernumerary crises when nobody had ever heard what they were. To invent that special strand person to person which in my view was probably television's greatest achievement of the 80s. To make you, Chris, the angry young man of the West. I think that was one of his greatest <laughs> achievements. Uh, so you think he's mellowed a bit over the years then? I think he's got very old. <laughs> I think he's got rather tired. And I do think that he needs uh, a damn good kick, and I'm here to give him it. Uh, is it true that you're considering asking Graham Purchase to join you up there? I wouldn't want to confirm any rumours at all, but everybody in television accepts new challenges. So, uh, sum up for me, would you, Mr Byford, your feelings as you hear that he is leaving us here in Bristol? David, mate, for once I'm going to be serious, and for everyone who's watching this video too. Uh, David Seymour in the last three years at BBC West has transformed it and other people have been on that ride too, you Chris, me as well, but the one man single-handedly who's done all the achievements has been David and I still think in all the places that I have worked in he has been the best boss of the lot and the great thing of David Seymour more than anything else is he works for you and not for himself. All the achievements of BBC West, and my God, they've been big in the last two or three years, have been in many ways down to David's inspiration. But his greatest asset is that he's done it for them and not for himself. Mark Byford, thank you very much. Amongst the brownie packs of the North, David Seymour is still remembered as he revealed in a weak moment recently, agreeing to appear in front of the camera once again. In 1968, my friends said I was going into show business. <laughs> I was a newspaper reporter. I'd worked for the Sheffield Telegraph and Star and the Daily Mail, and my newspaper friends all pulled my leg. But when I saw the old church hall, I knew that wasn't going to be the London Palladium. I'll never forget one night, 
broadcasting live to the people of Yorkshire when underneath me the local brownie troop were playing around. They were still meeting in the old church hall, you see. And I was a very inexperienced broadcaster and I, I stopped and I said, uh, incidentally, if you can hear a lot of banging and shouting and squealing, don't worry, it's just the brownies. They're meeting underneath me. So then, you're finally leaving. I wonder what was behind that. I thought, is it because we've stuffed you so often? You know, not just the Bev Lewis story, but the Swindon manager's job, Gloucestershire Royal Nurses story last week, the minibus story in Gloucester, and I thought, well, no, it can't be that. We've stuffed them so many times. And then Mark came up to me, you know, the big ape that he is, put his arm around me. He says, how are you? In? He says, it's serious. He says, I'm worried about Ward Davy. I says, Davy, I says, why are you talking like that? I says, you're a Yorkshireman, Mark. He says, no, no, Ian. He says, this is serious. I says, well, what's the matter? He says, he's distraught. He says, he's heartbroken. He says, I just can't get him to speak to us. I says, what's the matter? What's brought it on? He says, Purchase. He says, Graham Purchase. He's walked out on him. I says, you're joking. I says, they were like that. You couldn't separate them. He says, I know. He says, I tell you what, he's desolate. He's cried buckets. I says, what's he going to do? He says, there's only one thing he can do. He's going north. I said, going north? He says, aye. I said, what's up there for him? He says, Ian, didn't ask me. He says, all I can say is, it's something to do with Mike Neville. I says, Mike Neville? I says, Mike Neville will never make up for Graham Purchase. Purchase is a punts. Mike Neville's fat. What are you on about? That's the story. Little Davy Seymour. What a sad deal. He's going to go and tap your lappy up the air one. Well, I wish him all the best. Gang canny, Jappy. Not much. A lot of people from here up there, wouldn't they? You know, Dave Garns is hoping to go. He wants to do breakfast time up there, but then really? perhaps he could do both at the same time. I thought he wanted to be the editor and do breakfast time here. This is an awful long way to go, isn't it, though? We're going to miss him, though. Mm. You think? Who? Yeah, hasn't got the kind of dynamism of uh, mm. Mark Byford or the glamour of uh, Jimmy Dewar, but he's that kind of person, isn't he? Yeah, I'll be sorry to see him go. You always like the sort of small and cuddly types, didn't you? Mm. I've been practicing my Geordie, though. All right, let's see it then. Why are you, man? Are we the lads? It's bound to offer me a job. What does that mean? I don't know, but it sounds Geordie. <laughs> Brilliant, Andy. Can we go now? The steel industry has seen many changes since nationalisation, but today comes news of a remarkable revolution in the whole structure of men and management.